welcome to another exciting episode of Life Stories. I'm your host and sometimes referee, Zach Stapp Pearson. And today I'm joined by he who is the Wakandan ambassador to United States military, the person closest in height to Chaos the Hammer, a one specialist Romulus, a.k.a. Michael That Hill. No maidens. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you know him, you love him. One of our new guys, but an old timer to me, a podcast, fellow podcast connoisseur and friend from high school, a one chaotic hammer. Good day, good evening, whatever time it is. <laughs> All right, Mr. Hammer, uh, why don't you uh, tell us what type of story you will be weaving today? All righty. So, as it was glanced upon before, there is a one individual that was mentioned during a story. A one Giovanni Rodriguez. And I am actually very familiar with this person. Uh, I spent a lot of time with them. And, well, know quite a few details of what inspired a lot of insanity in this person. Uh, why people looked at him and were like, what's up with that kid? From little quirky things he did down to just his bare personality. Uh, a lot of things were there. Let's see. We got a lot uh, of things were wrong with them too. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Um, one of the things one might actually notice in most cases is that uh, whenever he got upset, whenever he would uh, get imposed upon, he might take a specific pose or stance as it were and people will look at him and be like look what are you doing like why are you like this and the, actually were versed in his uh proclivities what he enjoyed what his hobbies were would know that on occasion this would be him taking the pose of akuma from street fighter and start to growl a little at people he oh this man tried a raging demon in public or something? Funny you should mention that. On one occasion, he did actually get upset with me personally and took exception to something that I said and wished to take it out in a phys uh, matter of phys physical aggression. That being said, he tried to throw, I believe it was an Iori punch combo from King of Fighters and ended up spraining one of his wrists when he hit me. <laughs> Outside of that, he... Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that actually happened. Uh, he, uh, quite often, it seemed, uh, decided that video games would be the best teacher for such activities of defense... And just watching him, even in one instance when we actually got into physical altercation with someone else, it just led me to look at him and just be like, just no, please, just just stop. I'll take care of this. Just no. Um, and in that same light would also, on many occasions, compare himself to, I believe it was Hie from Yu Yu Hakusho, which probably led him to adapt to the style including that ratty trench coat he wore for a bajillion years, which I'm pretty sure he still has. Am I the only one who am I the only one who thinks this guy may have been some type of combination autistic and sociopath? And before the internet tries to burn me for that, I don't mean that in the oh you you're still so stupid, you must be autistic. I mean like I think he may have actually been autistic but was never diagnosed, but also a sociopath kind of way. Uh Honestly, very likely. Um, he did have his weird reasonings for things, his associations of how he portrayed himself as such characters, um, why he would have liked to have portrayed himself as some sort of video game fighting character Those uh, in those tenses. And like as I mentioned before, his moniker, the world need to accept me how I am, I don't need to change for anyone. Uh, that actually kind of got a little screwier with him as I progressed in spending more time with him. Do 
he never really wanted to kind of adapt his behavior and change a little bit, it seemed. He wanted to continue down this dark anime protagonist life, as it seemed. And even in some cases, I believe it led him to not being able to hold a job, unfortunately. But that just kind of coincides with everything just culminating together. Um, Does he have parents? Uh, out of respect, I would like to act a little, little respect. I would like to not touch on that. Oh, I guess that means they're nice people and they just got a shit son. But, okay, continue. Um, it more so led to, like, how his whole attitude towards the entire world and looking at him was led to, even in formal situations, even as little as having dinner at another friend's house, uh, went over to uh, this girl I was dating, her house once, and we had dinner with her family. He was there, and because of his specific diet, decided to grab an entire tray of french fries and load up the entire plate that he had in front of him with pretty much no regard for anyone else. He, uh, I believe it was an incident he had as a child that led him to not want to trust many foods, so... On the whole, most of the time, I saw him pretty much consist off of nothing but fries, chips, and a two-liter that God only knows how long was in his backpack for. He's not making it to 50. Probably not. Um, and that coinciding with his presentation and his diet, it because also, when I knew him, it seemed like he kind of valued card gaming and manga more than pretty much anything else and video games as well uh he always had easily like two three hundred dollars worth of of either Yu-Gi-Oh or magic cards in his bag he'd always have like that like at the previously mentioned two liter and always some anime paraphernalia as well but seldomly did he ever choose to use these things to actually update himself, to better himself. He always decided to go about these ways of trying to get these things to make him, I guess, feel cooler, feel better. I remember when I got him into Magic the Gathering at one point, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, he just had a huge collection of cards just magically appear out of nowhere. What else we got here? Uh, that also being said, he also valued all of that by his mental health rather than sitting down and actually having a meaningful discussion or conversation with how he was doing about anything. He wanted to take a few moments, always discuss cards, card tactics, card strategies, uh, continue to ask me if I wanted to quote unquote join a crew for card gaming, which you know, at the time I was like in my early 20s, I was like, well, you know, maybe sure. Cool. That sounds like it'd be kind of neat. But then as it slowly progressed after I got out of that and playing card games, uh, I still to this day on occasion have people ask me if I want to come back and join the squad. And being 35 now, I don't really have time to sit down and play card games anymore. Plus, like, all the card games have a digital version now, so. Yeah, exactly. You know, at, at least adapt to the times and do something like that, but um, never really actually trying to move forward with that kind of stuff. And to be honest, the uh, the the whole thing that was mentioned before, uh, on one of the occasions where she tried the whole car thing because it was mentioned before he uh he did decide that 
I'm guessing because he couldn't hold a job. He needed a means of income, such and so forth. I met him during one of those times where he was getting a settlement from someone. And I'm guessing from what I saw before, behaviors that, yeah, that's pretty much what his source of income was for a while. Yeah, Just might want to let us know how he got those settlements. That's kind of like the highlight of this thing. Yeah. Uh, he actually did tell me the first time it happened that, uh, oh yeah, I'm getting this money from a settlement because a uh, car hit me when I was crossing the street. And then I was like, at the time, first time, it's like, okay, that's that's understandable. That sucks. But then moving forward, you know, it happened again. Just, oh yeah, came out of nowhere and it hit me. I'm like, that's kind of odd. I mean, you might want to start having a little bit better situation this. But then came the time when it happened and he got severely injured during it and actually had to have, I believe it was a uh, reconstruction of the femur with a metal rod because his femur was destroyed. And I'm kind of guessing he maybe learned his lesson after that. Maybe. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe he's got two femurs now and no one just heard about it. It's very possible. Very, very possible. But Okay, so those two fights in high school, let's go into that, because I heard about one of them, but I didn't know there was two. Uh, one of them, well, like, as I said, one of them was with me. We had, a, uh, we had a discussion about something to do with card gaming, and I called them out for, you know, pulling a cheat move. You know, every game, every card game has that one combination, and I was like, "Dude, that's a garbage combination. You're literally just cheating someone out of a decent game." And he took exception to that. Are you calling me a cheater? I'm not cheating. These are the game rules. Check it. Look it up online. I'm like, I have looked it up online, but that's still garbage and robbing me of a good game. To which got angry, growled, took a anime character fighting pose hit me a few times and one of those times he's just started shaking his wrist and the next day I saw him he had a wrist brace on uh the other time was because me and him went to this place that used to be in the neighborhood versions one of the last really decent arcades in the area lots of fun there and we were just hanging out for the night uh, all of a sudden we saw two people from high school not really the most savory characters, they, you know, had exceptions towards both of us, I would assume, from the altercation that transpired. And as they met us outside after we left, because I was just like, you know, we, we just leave, dude. We'll go hang out at my place, play some games or something. And it led to them following us outside, stalking us for like about half a block until they ran up to catch up to us. And they were just like, what? What do you guys want? And they were very, very, very unclear with why they were following us, why they were coming after us. But instantly, Geo decided to take his fighting stance. And I just told him, no, man, just just stop. We, we don't need to do this. We could just get out of here. And as they did that, one of them sucker punched him in the mouth. He had a nice big old split lip. It swole up. But uh, we were able to get away from him. No fight actually broke out. But uh, it kind of shows there's like a little bit of a uh, lacking in his defenses there, I bet. Especially since he's generally just caught a main character from some stupid video game somewhere. Okay, so there was one in particular incident. Um, well, I think, you, well, if you've listened to the podcast, I if you know. There are some stories that are the middle, beginning, or end, or link it directly into other stories. But this was something in particular. I had a conversation with uh, with uh, Joey Blonde Wolf because, for those who don't remember, me and Hammer and Joey Blonde Wolf all went to the same high school for a small time. And shout out to her YouTube. Feel free to look it up. Da 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 da. But uh, there will be links in the description. But uh, I was coming down and getting ready to go to class, and it was. I don't think it was you. It was some other guy and her and it was him because, you know, some there are people who naturally click up, right? 
And I never saw him say anything when he was with those two. But one day I'm coming down the stairs like I'm going to go to uh, English or history class, whatever class Mr. C was teaching at the time. Mm-hmm. And fucking he just blurts out, dude, we you get your fucking hands off my girlfriend? Now, I know they're not dating, but they both freeze in place, confused. And I was like, wow, that's going to be a story. Funny story later. I'm going to look into that. But then the school bell went off and I just bolted to class and I completely forget. And the only thing Joey told me is that, oh, yeah, he did say something like that. But it was weird because I'm not his girlfriend, nor was I ever his girlfriend. But that's like as far as it went. But then something happened with you, I think, later when you found this out. Uh, yeah, uh, I had a little discussion with him about this. Uh, it's like, we want to seeing this. Uh, and it wasn't even just that. It, it also extended to like other things revolving around while back then when I had my relationship where he would try to do compromising things to me, like put me in compromising situations that I couldn't understand why, but it's also because I realized he actually had a pretty strong infatuation with her back then. And it really bothered me, and I kept talking to him about it of, yeah, dude, this needs to stop. You you need to back off and chill out a bit. And on some many occasions, he would get angry and storm off like he always did. Uh, usually, of course, with the you know, words, you don't understand, and then just stomp off, because that's just what he did. He didn't want to talk about things. He just wanted you to accept it is what it is. This man sounds like a fucking Green Day music video brought to life, I swear. I mean, no doubt. Absolutely. Uh, he really seldom wanted to actually talk things out. He wanted to either bring it to video game fisticuffs or it would just be, you'll never understand. You don't understand me. You, you won't get me. And I'm like, I've told him on many occasions during those times, just like, dude, I have been friends with you for like five ish years now. I understand you. I, I get you. I want to keep trying to play this whole mysterious stranger card, but it's not going to work with me. I, I get what's up with you. I get why you're like this, but I don't understand why you keep pulling it. And even to this day, I sit there and try and think about it, and there's no way around it. It, it seems like more he wanted to force it not understood as opposed to you know it, that someone understands him okay um is there anything else because uh just so we're clear you know well since i guess there hasn't been another person for me um i don't know where your ending to this story is going to be so when you get there you have to let us know because i'm not gonna know no that's fair i i, I was more you know Leaving open ended for questionings on him because I do have all I do have a decent bit about him, but this is like everything that's about him, his okay, personality. So, all oh, of that. cool. Okay. I do have a question, but Romulus, you go first. I got to pull up some pictures again. Oh, so, I to phrase my thoughts right now because I feel like. I was there a lot, and then actually understanding that fucking I need to change because this is not socially acceptable at fucking all. Considering how I have been around a many of people thanks to the job that I'm currently in and almost out of, so oh man. What do I ask first? So this dude just constantly tries to fight like he in a video game over dumb shit. Yeah. Like any slight sign of opposition towards him met with a dramatic trench coat whip and like one fist straight down, one fist at his chest as if he's posing and ready, and he just heard round one, fight, hit. Okay, and two, he was getting income by jumping in front of, in front of cars, I'm assuming. That's where 
the that was going to. Yeah. You you would be absolutely correct on that. Uh, the entire time of knowing him, he only had one actual job, and even then, it was only for like two months he had it. And of the five years that you've known him, has it always been a stagnant delusion or illusion increased over the time you have known him? It seemed like slowly but surely something might have been feeding it because it kind of, it did seem to just stay at a baseline, but there'd be moments where it kind of peaked and that's when the crazier shit came out. But then, uh, more or less, it more or less, while wow, that actually threw me off guard. What? That, that picture. That, <laughs> that. I, I, li I, listen, bro, I think that's uh, her now. I want to make sure I get my verbiage right, or I guess in this case, uh, nouns, maybe adjectives. Um, but see, here's the thing, like, that's, this is actually what initially triggered me wanting to know what the hell happened to that guy slash now gal. Cause I want to, I got to phrase this word because we're referring to somebody, um, who in past tense, but in the future tense, you know, had a different gender. So eh, the wording's a little time machine-y. But anyways, so you weren't here for it, but I don't know if you remember when I sent you that giant text message chain about somebody got into somebody we went to school with pictures and was pretending to be them and trying to like get information from a lot of St. Gregory kids and trying to get pictures of them. Remember that shit? Yep, I do. I remember I actually yeah. refreshed myself on that. Yeah, well, there's actually a whole entire podcast episode about that entire incident. Because here's the thing. A bunch of St. Gregory people started coming out of the woodwork. And one of them was Xavier. Now, I don't know if you remember Xavier, but Xavier was infamous because Xavier was the one who got bored in the middle of class and decided he's going to set a book on fire. Remember that? I do. Yeah, well, Xavier is not Xavier anymore. Did you know that? I, I remember that. I remember that from the podcast. Oh, so you watched that episode. Yeah, well, I didn't actually, uh, side note on that one, um, technically unrelated, but uh, he act, uh, she actually solved one of the great mysteries that was plaguing everybody's mind for like a full year that happened at the school. I don't know if you were there that day, because obviously got flushed, but I don't know if you were there that day, but somebody had sex in the men's bathroom, and there was a massive amount of semen in the toilet. Like, like somebody just went to town. Or they had a couple different sessions. Uh, Raven actually knows what happened. The, the, the mystery was finally solved. And ironically, at the time, Xavier wasn't even hiding it. No one just thought to ask Xavier. Crazy how shit works sometimes. Ask what actually happened? <laughs> Okay, uh, well, I mean, technically, this is not a triple X show, um, but this is uh, what you would call an adult show or R-rated show at a bare minimum. So, essentially, the recruiter that came to school that day, as you know, with most schools, if they let them, um, military recruiters show up seven, uh, in junior year or they show up to the senior class in senior year, right? I remember well, that. Yeah. So that guy was a traveling recruiter. And one day when he was coming out the bathroom, well, that day when he's coming out the bathroom, uh, Raven started talking to him. No, wait, wait. Xavier started talking to him about potentially being in the military. Also, side note, that's why we couldn't find Xavier for so many years. And he got off Facebook. He didn't hate nobody. He had got a military position that was so exclusive that they didn't allow social media. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah. So he was actually very well off. So they got to talking and the, the recruiter is standing up and uh, Raven 
uh, Xavier, sorry, is sitting down. And this is the part that people are going to be wondering about when they listen to this because it's going to be edited out. Um, so, but you guys are going to know. So, essentially, Xavier just blurts out, hey, you have a boner right now. Like, mind you, they're alone. He had a hall pass, but no one knew that, uh, you know, Xavier was downstairs. And he's like, hey, you have a boner right now. And they fucked. In that bathroom, in that stall. Apparently, also, nobody knew Xavier was actually gay. But that also explains why he might have hated the school. Because he had to deal with constant homophobia and internalize that shit. Yeah. And then that recruiter ended up getting him enlisted. And uh, he got a security clearance tech type job. Uh, counterintelligence or something along that lines involved programming and possibly hacking all that shit. So yeah, he's that guy. And then when he got out, Xavier transitioned into, took his money and transitioned into Raven as we know her now. But here's the crazy thing. The day that this is happening with that person trying to pretend to, uh, who stole the pictures from somebody we knew and knew a little bit too much about the teachers and shit. Yeah. Well, Raven just happened to be texting me that day because Mateo gave them my number because, well, uh, I mean, I don't know if you remember or not, but, um, I wasn't going by Zach in high school at the time, or rather I, I still went by Zach's, but, uh, no one in St. Gregory knew that that was my like alias. So she referred, uh, Raven over to me on a complete and total fluke. So that's actually how I got back in contact with Raven. Raven is the person who I was talking about in the, in that podcast going after this hacker because we knew that they were not actually from St. Gregory and they were manipulating text messages that we were sending. Right. Yeah. So, um, they actually went to fight them and try to figure out where they were, but they realized that Raven was like hacking them and trying to get their IP and stuff. Saw that the, point of uh, origin was coming from India and whoever this crazy good hacker was wiped half of Raven's computer before he could turn his shit off her shit off now that you actually mentioned the story I do remember hearing about that yeah well we, we have an entire podcast about it because it centered around me because it was someone I knew from St. Gregory but oh. No, that, no, that I know. I'm talking about the other story. <laughs> ah, gotcha. Yeah. All right. So I'm going to make a mental note real quick. Hold on. Let me see so I can know where to edit this in the future. Okay. Nobody. Let me forget at the 28, uh, the 23 to 28 minute mark. I got to edit around this, but yeah, continue into the saga of this crazy bastard. Also, if you know anything about when this motherfucker decided he wanted to be trans or she wanted to be trans, let me know because I'm trying to figure out how, how we got from A to B because there seems like there's something in between that was missing. Yeah, no, seriously, like I, I'm looking at this picture and like that, that face, I know that face that is... That has to be them. They, that's just wild to see. I'm still trying to figure out how Joey got a hold of this. Because Joey was genuinely like disturbed by this motherfucker. Like, my, my brain's like just processing this. Like, I don't remember like any inclinations or anything or reminders from the past and everything i i don't know bro that's I, this is legit the same way i feel about like raven and again just to clarify this before the internet makes some bullshit up me and raven was pretty cool in high school like I, I spoke to at the time him every pretty much every day whoop my ass in Yu-Gi-Oh so bad and would always have this like evil grin like no nah, you can still have a comeback yeah keep trying going on and was just like i don't know an actually respectable nerd who wasn't fucked in the head and couldn't talk to people much like well the person we're discussing um and i would have never guessed in a billion years that you know 
Xavier is now uh, uh, successfully transitioned into Raven. Uh, I don't know if you, because, you know, you were always a year ahead of us, but I don't know if you came across Xavier back then, back in the day. But um, I think I have some pictures of what is currently Raven right now, too. Let's just say it went a lot better than this situation on screen right now. Yeah, because this, uh, I will actually share one to you. This, this is the one that I remember. That 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 is like the quintessential what I remember. Oh my god! How this is a weeb meme if I've ever seen one. He's got the sunglasses, the trench coat, the sword, and in the background you even see the fighters, uh, the fighting stick, and the PlayStation Two just chilling. So what you're saying is no one told him the Matrix wasn't real. Uh. There's another one that is open to the public. You can find it easily where I believe he is wearing an Akatsuki headband holding two airsofts. It has braids in his hair. You ever just wonder in your life? Cause well, I've wondered this almost every time I finished a token episode of life stories. You ever just wonder how the fuck or what the fuck you did or must have done in a past life to meet the amount of crazy shit fat people that you do in your current life, especially when you know you don't even act like them and shit. Sometimes I've been, I wonder that. I, I, I think I told Romulus about this. Sometimes I just wonder how we come across fucked up people when you weren't looking for them and then they just gravitate towards you, even though you've told them, hey, get the fuck away from me. Where do they come from? What asshole did they crawl out of and why can't they go back? You know, it, that is just one of the great mysteries of life, my friend. <laughs> Honestly. Oh. I don't know when all of this happened, when this changed, but honestly, I'll, I'll be real. All the crazy fucked up shit that happened with this guy if this is who he is now, this is what he's coming into. All the best to him for actually figuring his shit out for once. You know? I mean, I, I've i seen high point. Uh, I've seen him in high points. I've seen him in low points. But honestly, if this is where he's going to go and get to, to figure out who he is, then honestly, Dio, all the best to you. Be, be your best you. <laughs> uh, as long as you're better than you used to be. I mean, I, honest, I honestly want her to get mental help. But again, so the internet doesn't, you know, try to crucify me or magically change what I've been voting in favor of for the past. Actually, I don't even know how long I've been voting at this point. Uh, when I say she needs help, I don't mean because she wants to transition. I mean, because as we've learned today. She batshit crazy. That's not sex relevant. Anybody can be batshit crazy. And some people make it a contest. And if you'll excuse me, I have an Amazon delivery. You guys talk amongst yourself or continue. For reference, here's the other one as well. That is absolutely breathtaking. Or it literally lives that meme, bro. Fucking master. Let me go all out. Let me go all out just this once. The, this is he is literally the definition of like a living embodiment of the kid who's like who's like you know don't fuck with me. I've got the power of God and anime on on my side. Is it bad that we have somebody in this group that looks like that kid? <laughs> is that bad? <laughs> Uh, I don't know if you saw the next picture I dumped in there, too. Oh, the handgun thing? Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Obvious airsoft as well. Of, yeah, I also put in a picture of Raven as an example of what can go right versus what can go wrong. Absolutely. What I don't understand is why the fuck she's staying all the way down in, I think it was... Kentucky or Alabama like you're a trans below the Mason Dixon line that's already a fucking war zone in and of itself but on top of that you're in the middle of bumfuck nowhere but then again you know 
went to a religious school, family upstate might not exactly be accepting. You wanted to get away. But there were better places to go than a place where they will try to bully you to death. Yeah, you know. Yeah. Yeah, like, and I know that uh, Raven been trying to go to conventions ever since she got out. And I'm just like, hey, listen, you ever in my neck of the woods, just say the word. Like, you and me can go for drinks. Because me and Raven are actually friends. Like, and you being, you transitioning into something else is not going to make me not be your friend. As far as I'm concerned, everybody has life transitions in general. You know, uh, you know, we don't have to get into it if you don't want to, especially. But uh, as you know, uh, Hammer, uh, I've been down with Joey from the first point that I found out that she, uh, she was in my Facebook list. So, uh, yeah, I know some shit about you too, but you know, I don't hold it against you. And like everybody in the world who makes a mistake, Joey included, I don't fucking treat you as if that's the only thing you've ever done with your life or that's where your journey to become a better person ends. You know, the only person who I genuinely that I've went to school with and I'm including everybody all the schools I've been to, there's only five people in my, in the entirety of my scholastic career, if you can call it that, that I genuinely don't respect. And I have no positive wishes for because, but that's because they do it to themselves. Like, what was it? Uh, ironically, the prettiest and the sluttiest girl in school, the one that everybody wanted to smash. Uh, I can't fucking stand her. Don't get me wrong. There was a time when I respected her. But I can't fucking stand her as an adult. Nothing is ever not her fault. And any bad thing that happens to her is because of someone else. And fuck, she's the queen of daddy issues and mommy issues. Like, I literally have never gone out of my way to purposely hurt or harm or be negative towards uh, Jennifer. But she's so damn stupid, she keeps pissing me off. And she acts like holding a petty grudge is going to make me like you or respect you more. I'm like, no, 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 sweetie. You pissed me the fuck off. And even when I came at you, when this giant incident was coming down where people are pretending to be people we know from high school and they have advanced knowledge of shit that they normally shouldn't and trying to get pictures and shit off them, you would be like the best target for them to get a hold of. Not because you quote unquote pretty, whatever the fuck you want to call yourself, but because you stupid and you petty so the fact that I even tried to help her, I was like, hey, watch out for this, 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 and this, because there's a person going around doing this shit. And she turned to her and said, stop taking me. He's like, motherfucker, it's called a block list button. You've had a problem with me for seven years. Just hit the fucking block list button. Because I left her alone for many a years when she started saying stupid shit to me and trying to whine and complain about me doing shit that I didn't do. And this is after I explained, I was like, yo, you're misinterpreting this whole situation. But... That's another story that we may possibly get into at some point. Um, but yeah, continue. That's pretty much all I got from, honestly. I uh, have like all my good general knowledge and like just more so an insight to why he was like that. Uh, there, there is some other things, but they're kind of those things that you wouldn't want to talk about. So that's. Really I know cool. how to edit, bro. Just go ahead. That's that's right, that dude. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, as usual, uh, you know, I don't force anybody to and not to say anything in these types of situations. Uh, Romulus, any final questions about this ex fuck boy, current fuck girl? Not at all. I, I have but one question. In your mind. In particular, what was the final breaking point of shit? What is the final thing he did that made you go, nah, fuck this? Not even the whole, hey, I'm trying to sabotage you and your girlfriend shit. What was the thing that made you say, man, fuck this dude. I'm done with you. What was that moment? I guess the moment I realized I just kind of outgrew everything that he was about, you know, I was trying to get serious about work and everything. I started not having as much time to just sit around and play card games all the time. And I just realized, yo, I, I think I'm just done. 
I, I'm done. I told them, man, there's there's a lot of crazy shit going on with you. Um, and I think I'm just, I need to distance myself from you. Um, we, uh, I, after high school, I disappeared for a good couple of months. People were wondering what I was doing. I worked for Disney for six months on an internship. Jesus Christ. Yeah, that was kind of crushing, but informative. <laughs> um, and when I got back, just wanted to pick up where we left off. He actually had a girlfriend. Actually, it was like he had two by the time I actually got back because it was with one, she on her with the other. And then we all started hanging out together like that. And then she left him. He wanted to get with me. I told him about it. Like, I was real about it. Like, dude, she wants to date me. I'm letting you know that now. And it was okay for a little while. Until he threw a tantrum on the train one time, one day, going up there. That led to me almost getting arrested. For what? Because I was trying to calm him down. He was thrashing around like an angry toddler. Uh, saying <laughs> he does that a lot. Saying that I ruined his life. I ruined his relationship. And I looked at him and deadass told him right then and there, look, you ruined it. You have no ambition. You have no goals. You have nothing in life. And you're trying to take aid a girl on the North Shore. What do you think was going to happen? And he kind of just went quiet for a second. Did his whole, oh, you don't understand. Passed me. Uh, and I grabbed his back, not violently, just like a look, man, you need to calm down and think about this before you keep going. He thrashes back again towards me. I put up a hand to stop, but basically stop if he slams into me. His, I believe it was his eye slammed into my hand. It swelled up. Someone called the cops. They saw him with a, with a nice brain. Uh, bright black eye at that point and they immediately thought that I had you know threw down with him and it eventually led to the cops saying look man I think you just need to go home he's going to visit his girlfriend and that's it man so he got put on the train and after that I just stopped talking to him no, it was it was a slow burn to get to that point, but eventually when I got to that point with him, I was like, nope, I'm I'm just done now. Well, I'm gonna tell you like I tell everybody on this show. Uh if life didn't happen, we wouldn't be able to learn from it. So Am I sorry that you and him aren't friends? No, not really. I'm still convinced he's an autistic sociopath. No hyperbole or intention of an insult. And that he needs medical attention of the psychological variety. But I am glad that unlike a decent chunk of people who I see nowadays, you know, you gain some level of acceptance of how life works or how getting ahead in life can work. Not everybody can fluke into bullshit. Some people have to work at it. And, hey, you, you, instead of having just scars, you got some good stories to tell because of it. Um, now, with that being said, uh, this brings our crazy episode about a guy who is now a girl who threw himself in front of cars to an end. Uh, Romulus, final statements. Delusion is a dangerous place if you can't pull yourself out of it. Very true. Hammer, is there anything you'd like to say in closing? Help kids. If there's a problem, just seek help. Don't blame the world. <laughs> or at a bare minimum, blame your parents. <laughs> All right. There. With that being said... This brings this episode to a close, and I will see you guys when I see you guys.